Our next presenter is from the Stampin' Up! corporate office. She met her husband while working at a local college in Hawaii. 14 years ago, they eloped to Hawaii. <laughs> On a Tuesday night, she went back to work Wednesday morning because they don't need a honeymoon, they're already in Hawaii. <laughs> Is that funny? Um, she's the mom of a 10-year-old and a 3-year-old, and she considers herself a stamper if everything is pre-cut for her and designed. <laughs> so she thinks Paper Pumpkin was designed for her, but you know. So. Please help me welcome to the stage the Corporate Communications Manager, Kim Fafita from Stampin' Up! Well, hello. 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 Don't worry, I'm not from Canada. I won't be swearing today. <laughs> <laughs> not that you can hear anyway. <laughs> I am so excited to be here. This is, I've worked at Stampin' Up! for just over nine years. And one of my really favorite things to do at Stampin' Up! One of the many opportunities they give me is to go to demonstrator events like this. And I just, there's so much energy in this room and you just come out and you're just excited and happy and I just go back to work feeling re-energized and remembering why I love my job and just feeling so excited that I get to do what I love every single day. And you guys are doing what you love every single day as well. So that's great. Um, as Becky said, I have been married for 14 years to Sione and I've got a little picture this is my little family. So my husband Sione, and then our little three-year-old Loni, and then our 10-year-old, who's the size of a small man. Um, his name is Viliami. So just something kind of funny. Um, Viliami came to us through the miracle of adoption. And so I always tell him, you are our first miracle. And then 10 years after Sione and I were married, I actually got pregnant, surprisingly, with our little Loni. And Ami was so excited that he was going to have a sibling. He really wanted to have a sibling. So while I was pregnant, he said to me, he goes, what color is the baby going to be? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, probably off-white. <laughs> he, said, he said, I hope he's white so we can have two of each. <laughs> So we have two brown, one very white, and one off-white in our family. <laughs> um, so I've been thinking about what I want to spend my few minutes on today, and I had this whole presentation planned about the importance of community, and I woke up Thursday morning and I just thought, man, I don't think that's like the right thing to talk about today, so I'm just going to sum that up for you really quickly. Being part of a community is important. You're here, you're part of uh, Inking, Idaho, so that's great. Stay part of the community, it's good for you. So, <laughs> all right, thank you. I decided instead that I wanted to spend my few minutes talking about why being you is good enough, okay? So, I think as women, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, whether we're moms to little humans or moms to little fur babies or we're someone's favorite auntie, whether we work inside the home or outside the home or both. Um, we just have so many expectations that we put on ourselves and that we feel you know, the pressure from others. And then you add on to that social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and we find ourselves comparing you know, looking at these photos of these people's fabulous lives and thinking, why isn't my life like that? Why don't I have a perfect husband or perfect children or a perfect kitchen? And we enter into this culture of comparison that's really hard on us. Um, so we're gonna talk about why we need to stop comparing ourselves to others. And I'm gonna go over three specific things that you can start doing today to stop comparing yourselves to others. So, the first thing is, the perfection you see in other people's lives is really an illusion. So when you're looking at
somebody's social media page and they have a beautiful shot. So I have a, a Facebook friend and she's been vacationing in Thailand. And oh my gosh, I look at that and think, wow, that would be really amazing to do that. Or do my friends post pictures of their kids doing craft projects or different things. I just think, oh, I wish I was a better mom and did that. Um, but really these are, it's the truth, but it's only part of the truth. So there's things going on that you don't see. So for example, I recently posted this picture on Facebook. This is my family. My husband um, has been in Colorado for the last, I guess, four weeks now at a work training. And so, yeah, it's just been me and the boys. I'm really, really, really happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I left my kids with my niece. <laughs> said, see ya. <laughs> so this was, we went and visited him last weekend in Colorado. And we went to this little park, and so we have this beautiful picture of the river and a bridge, and they're all smiling and happy. But what you don't see is about 30 seconds before this photo was taken, I was screaming at my kids to stop running on the rocks because they were gonna fall into the water. The water was gross. It was like nasty and slimy and it smelled. Um, just out of the frame, there were these two women. I'm pretty sure they were smoking pot. <laughs> My sweet little army there, he was like telling me, I'm so hungry, I need food, I need lunch, and <laughs> complaining that we had to be at this park at all. So, yeah, we had this beautiful moment, but it was just that, it was just a moment. That's not real life. Um, how many of you follow like a lifestyle blog? You know the ones that they show like the really beautiful Pinterest-worthy recipes or parties or, um, here's a picture. This is actually a friend of mine, she has a lifestyle blog. Isn't that beautiful? Look at how well behaved those kids are. <laughs> All the party goers are dressed perfectly. And she's invited me to a few of her parties and I always polite, politely decline because I don't feel like I'm Pinterest worthy. <laughs> so there's this writer in uh, Utah, he's actually a blogger, but he wrote an article about lifestyle blogs. And in it he told a story about Sarah, who was a, she was someone who actually could create recipes from Pinterest and have them actually work. So she was a pretty talented baker. And her friend, Braxlin, was a lifestyle blogger. And so Braxlin asked Sarah to come over to her house and make one of these Pinterest-worthy treats, one of these kind of cool, trendy treats. So Sarah went over there, made the treat. When she was done, Braxlin had her nanny bring down her daughter, called in her photographer, and they took photos of Braxlin and her daughter making these treats. And so when she posted that on her blog, her half a million blog followers saw these beautiful pictures of a mother and daughter making these gorgeous treats together. There was no mention of Sarah, there was no mention of, you know, that she didn't actually make them. She had just created this perfect moment and this perfect illusion. So the point of this, I'm not trying to rail on bloggers, I'm not trying to rail on people who post beautiful pictures on Facebook or Instagram, but the point is just to keep it in perspective, okay? These are just moments we're seeing and really a lot of them are kind of um, illusions and not reality. Second, and this is something I tell my son all the time, because I'm a good mom. Life isn't fair. <laughs> they always say, that's not fair. And I'm like, well, life isn't fair. And that's okay. You know, we, um, some people are just born with more advantages than others. And that's just how it goes. That's how the cookie crumbles, I guess they say. You know, some people are born with a perfectly symmetrical face or with a super fast metabolism or with really rich parents. And that's, that's just how it is. Um, Dr. Deborah Carr pointed out that we often beat ourselves up for not trying hard enough, if we just try harder, when really it's not about trying, it's just about the, there's not a level playing field, and that's the reality of it. Dr. Jennifer Kunst, she compared life to the weather. She said life is about as fair as the weather. And what she means is, if we look outside and we see that the sky is cloudy or that it's raining, 
We don't say, oh, it's raining because I'm being punished or I'm being rewarded. It's just the weather. That's just how it happens. You can't do anything to control it. So, so the weather, like life, has very little to do with fairness. And I like this quote. Rather than shouting to the sky, why me? We can resolve to do what we can to enjoy the sunny weather and cope with the storms. You might have noticed too that we often tend to compare our weaknesses to other people's strengths. So I have a sister-in-law who's a really fabulous cook. And I'm always like, oh man, if only I could cook like her. Or I have a friend who is really good at doing crafts with her kids. Oh, if only I was good at that, or do, good at crafting with my kids. Or look at this fabulous event that Becky's planned. Like, man, what if I was a really good event planner? Well, cooking and event planning, and dare I say crafting, <laughs> are not my strengths. But I do have other strengths. I'm pretty good at my job. I consider myself a good writer. And maybe I don't craft a lot with my kids, but I'm really good at kind of having fun with them and being silly with them. So instead of worrying about comparing what I'm not as good at with other people's strengths, so comparing my weaknesses with their strengths, we need to focus more on what our strengths are and how we can improve on those. Third, if we're constantly comparing, we're gonna turn friendships into rivalries. So how many of you have experienced this? I know I have. I start comparing myself to my friends and in my head, I start creating these weird little rivalries that they know nothing about. They're not part of it. It's just in my own head. Um, we had something like this happen actually in my family. I have my oldest brother. There's six of us in our family. My oldest brother, um, he and his wife kind of got into this habit of always comparing themselves to the people they lived around, um, to the people that went to their church. And whenever we went to visit them, they'd always talk about, oh, so-and-so's house or so-and-so's car or so-and-so's kids. And that started to extend to where my brother was comparing himself to my other brother. And he was comparing their kids and their jobs and their positions they held in our church. And he actually ended up kind of cutting himself off from our family for a while. It was really sad. We, he just sort of disappeared from our lives. And everything's fine now. We're... Um, he's back in our lives, but we missed out on several years with him and his kids because he had allowed to turn what should have been this beautiful sibling relationship into a rivalry. I often, well actually, let's go, Dr. Deborah Carr says, if we use others as a benchmark to evaluate ourselves, that creeping twinge of jealousy may undermine our ability to truly cherish the good things that come to others. So I often have to remind myself that because someone is having good fortune or good success, that doesn't take away from my own. And I can be happy for others or for the things that happen to them without lessening my own value or my own worth. Which brings me to my final point, and that is you be you. We need you. You are the only you that exists, which makes you very important. <laughs> if you weren't around, who else would be you? There's no one else. There's only you. So if I wasn't me, who else would be making inappropriate remarks at the department meeting? <laughs> I don't know who would do that. Well, probably Bonnie, but <laughs> we each have our own way of being inappropriate. <laughs> if Becky wasn't Becky, who would have created this amazing team that she has now. Each of us is important and has something to offer. So I want you to take a few seconds. I want you to think about something that you're really good at. Not stamping, I know you're good at stamping. I've seen it. <laughs> so think of something else. And then I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I am good at, and then fill in the blank. Don't worry about being braggy. I'm asking you to do this. <laughs> So just take a few seconds right now, turn to your neighbor, and tell them what you're good at. Okay. 
because your neighbor is good at. <laughs> okay, two of them. <laughs> the point is we all have our different strengths and we all have the things that we bring to this world. And even if I did say, okay, you can say you're good at stamping or good at paper crafting, even then you have a unique way of looking at and working with stamps ink and paper that is uniquely you and that's your strength. As I look at those boards out there, I see people who are really good at punch art. I see people who are really good at creating these beautiful vintage cards. I see people who are good at creating, really taking simple products and making really cute and fun creations. If all of you did the exact same thing with stamps, ink, and paper, this event wouldn't be that interesting, would it? It's the coming together, your unique you-ness that you bring to these events that make them worthwhile. So as you embrace your you-ness and embrace the strengths that you have, you're gonna help others express their creativity and your creativity is gonna grow as well. So just to recap really quickly, the perfection you see in others' lives is an illusion. Life isn't fair, and that's okay. Comparison will turn friendships into rivalries, and you be you. So one of my favorite quotes is attributed to Theodore Roosevelt, and it says, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't let comparing yourself to others steal your joy. Instead, as author Elizabeth Gilbert put it, embrace the glorious mess that you are. <laughs>